Woo, it's brisk and it's almost April. I know, it's ridiculous. What is going on here? Anyway, it is a really late spring. It's kind of helping us, I guess, in some ways. It's giving guys more time, but it's also really stressful to get the jobs done that don't have shops that we thought we were going to be working on already. We're also down a truck, so we're going to go check on a truck and then Chuck's going to take you guys and you're going to go see a job that's happening close by and get an update from them. Oh hey, got a car seat for you. Yeah. <laughs> and if you don't like I, that I, one. Just my size. That's right, and there's a five point artist one there too if you right. need that. <laughs> well, there she is. Getting all cold and lonely. Sad. Sad. Brand new truck, you guys. We cannot use it. We had a oil pump go out or low oil pressure. We ran it for a while and it kept having issues. Brand new truck, 2022, still under warranty. A national back order of gasket, of a oil pan gasket and 12 bolts. What a country we live in right now with all this shortage crap. I'm just, I'm so mad. I haven't been proud of how I've not hidden my frustrations, but here we have is a very expensive, capable truck and we can't use it. We're overloading the F-350. We're overloading the uh, half ton we have. We just went out and rented a three quarter ton at Enterprise Truck Rental just to help. And so now I'm paying more money than what, uh, what I've already paid. But you guys experiencing this out there? I know a lot of farmers are probably dealing with a lot bigger scale. I mean, this is just an annoyance and some cost, but man, some of you guys are, this is your livelihood. This has got to change. Anyone else? Can I get an amen on that? This has got to change. We don't want our stuff sitting in snowbanks. Not getting useful, used. All right, buddy. See you next time. We love you still. <laughs> oh, at least this Ford's still working. And by the way, I've been so mad about this that I literally have been saying I may never buy a Ford again. But then we went to Enterprise Truck Rental and they got a bunch of Rams sitting there too that have a dipstick recall and they've been sitting there for months. It sounds like it's an industry yeah, for sure. problem, it's been not a, a- It's been a great truck. It's a fantastic truck. It just ha <sighs> has had these nagging issues and it comes down to support. It comes down to support and national back order on parts. If you cannot get the part, they're not gonna they're not gonna support it. They can't. They can't do the work. So hopefully six weeks doesn't turn into twelve weeks. We're probably gonna be eight to ten. That's a long time to not have a vehicle. Alright guys, hey, we're out in Sabin, Minnesota today, and it's you know the third week in March, and we and as you see, man, look at all this stinking snow. This weather just isn't gonna break, so but the work must go on. So we've got uh, we got a couple of our guys out here this week taking care of a hydraulic drive and an IS install. And hey, let's jump in there and take a look at what they got going on. All right, hey, we're going to check out what we're doing here with this telegenetic blockage monitor system. And uh, we're doing an install on this 1860. We are also doing a hydraulic drive install on this cart. It's a 1900 cart. And we've got Josh over here doing the install. Um, we're, we're breathing new life into this 1900 cart and getting it to be much more accurate on what we're putting down for product. And by doing that, we're installing, we've taken the factory transmissions off and we are uh, installing these hydraulic drive motors. We'll go up and set up the display in the cab. And that's the critical piece is getting that setting those settings correct for that dry rate controller and uh, getting it to operate the system one of the things that we do need from the from the drill let's say is the work equipment switch so that work equipment switch has to be wired up through from the drill up through into the cart in 
into the dry rate controller so it knows when you're in the ground and when you should be planting and when it should turn the system on. We've done a couple of things since the last update. It was one is, you know, we got the hydraulics all plumbed and run. Uh, we've got the wiring ran and the dry rate controller and also the gateway and the antenna for the IIS system. And also uh, one of the critical things is to run your power. So you need to run your work equipment switch for the hydraulic drive. Um, one of the harnesses that you do also are, are running uh, from the tractor here is, is your foot switch harness um, that runs up into the tractor, and I'll show you that after a bit. But we're, we put in this new ISO cable. We put in this nice new cable here that replaces the old one, the old factory one. That one is no longer used, but the, the old light cable is still used uh, in this case. So we also have our connections for the IIS system here, the power wires to the, um, to the cab are connected here. And we wanna make sure we have a connection point right here at the back of the tractor. So all you have to do is unplug those things and, and you can unhitch. We are running your hydraulics um, off of this main uh, diverter. So the hydraulics coming from the tractor come in right here and then we tee off to give you us hydraulic power up over here to our PWM valve. So the PWM valve is controlling that oil flow to the motor and that's what controls the speed on the motor, which is driving the old drive shaft, which like before when we were running it with the gear drive. So we also have the, the uh, manual switches it's right here so you can run those meters manually we're also utilizing the old speed sensors the original speed sensors and that just plugging into our harness here and as you can see this is how we're running our hydraulic lines and it's just teed off from the front to the back tank in this two tank situation and then we are um, plumbing these uh, motors together we're returning air oil flow on this side and returning that back here back to the fan circuit uh, the fan return so anyway uh, that's how that kind of looks when it's done and wrapped up we will go up in the cab and set up the hydraulic drive and then um, down here in a moment we'll we'll walk through how you set up the is system on the ipad as well